Hello, welcome to my new video. A while back I bought an uh, Atari 800XE and it came with an Atari XC11 tape recorder. That was a rare tape recorder uh, that was only on the market for about six months and uh, was almost not available in the US. In this video I want to go in more detail about this tape recorder and talk about tape as storage media in general. This uh, XC11 also came with a mysterious modification. Let's see if we can find out what it was for. In the 8-bit era of computing, the floppy disk was the best known storage method. But that was still very expensive, especially in the early period. Which meant that tapes were widely used as storage medium at that time. This was especially the case in Europe. I still remember when I had finally saved enough money by a delivering newspaper to be able to buy the Atari 800XL. But I didn't have the money at that time though to also pay for a storage device. At that time I mainly used the computer for programming and I had to leave the power on to not lose my program. But at a certain point I had to switch it off and then you lost everything. But after a few weeks of uh, delivering newspapers I had saved enough money to buy the Atari 1010 tape recorder. For a long time this was my only uh, system for loading and saving data. It wasn't until way later when this drive also became a bit cheaper that I bought an Atari 1050 disk drive. Now I understand that many other computer hobbyists of that time had similar experience. The tape drive was therefore been an important system for a long time. Let's see which tape systems Atari has offered over time. With the first generation of Atari 8-bit computers, the 400 and the 800, Atari offered the 410 tape drive. There are two variants of this drive. First there was a version with the mechanism from Japan. This drive was derived from an audio recorder that was also sold under the Sears label. About a year later, this model was replaced by a new variant with the mechanism from Chelco from Hong Kong. From what I understand, the quality of that model is a lot less. In Europe, the 400 and 800 computers were hardly available, especially here in the Netherlands, so I never have seen uh, this recorder myself. When the era of the XL computers uh, started, a new recorder was released, which better matched the XL look. That was the Atari 1010 tape drive. The drive has two SEO connections and an external power supply. There were also two variants of this, which could only be distinguished externally by the color of the sticker in the tape mechanism. You had the 1010 with the Chelco mechanism from Hong Kong, which had a silver sticker, and there was the 1010 with a mechanism from Sanio from Japan, with an uh, orange sticker. And in general people think the Sanio version with the orange sticker is of better quality. When the XE line of Atari 8-bit computers was released, Atari also introduced a new tape drive again. That became the Atari XC11 tape drive. But that was mainly in Europe. It was not, or almost not, available in the US. But in the US almost everyone had switched to disk drives by then. Unlike previous tape drives, the XC11 had a fixed SEO cable for the connection to the computer and an SEO port to pass the SEO signal to the next device. The drive catches power from the computer via the SEO cable. But six months later, the XC11 was replaced by the XC12. Probably for cost reasons, this model was clearly of inferior quality. The model was based on a PhoneMark tape drive, from which the Commodore tape drive also was derived. This model also had a fixed SEO cable, but no SEO port to pass through the SEO signal. The XC12 therefore always had to be placed at the end of the SEO daisy chain system. And which tape drives I own myself? This is the Atari 1010 tape drive from my youth. We see the orange sticker, so luckily I had the better model. It has now clearly jelloed. 
Uh, we have to do something about this soon. Later I got an 130 XE and it came with this XC12 tape drive. Clearly of lower quality. This drive has only a one cable uh, for data and power and no second SAO port. This drive even included the original box. But yes, I think uh, the boxes of the XE and ST line are the least attractive. This drive is uh, also clearly yellowed. And then we have my XC11 tape drive, which I recently got with my uh, 800 XE. Even by the cable you can see it is of better quality. And this one has the SAO port to uh, pass through the signal. But my drive uh, also has this uh, strange modification. No idea what it does. And it sounds like there's also a loose part in it. Let's go open it. And this is what the drive looks like from the inside. There are a number of wires running from the top to the bottom. I first have to disconnect this uh, wire somehow. Ah, that's what I thought. The loose part is a spring. From this connector two cables should go to the top. But it looks like there's only one going now. Look, the spring that was loose needs to be put on air. But that happens uh, almost to all uh, XC11 drives. Luckily, the second cable is still present and not cut off. So I will have to connect this again uh, somewhere to the drive. And here we have the wires of the modification. See where they go to. These wires from the first switch go to the PCB here. But the others disappear under the drive. I have to examine that first. Luckily, I was able to find the schematic. The first switch has an S and an M. That must be uh, for stereo and mono. I removed the drive mechanism from the drive. The audio from the left channel tape head goes to this connector via this cable. This connector also contains a cable for the right channel. But that signal is connected to ground. The switch is also connected to the audio head. If the switch is set to mono, the audio cable is only connected to the left channel audio head. When the switch is set to stereo, both heads are connected. So what I have to do is connect this wire back to the left head 
and connect also this cable to the right channel of the head. First I'm gonna disconnect the wire for the right channel from ground. And now, disconnect the switch from the head. Then remove the short between the left and right head. and remove some excess solder. Now the wires from the right channel can be connected again. And then the second wire of the left channel can also be connected. The other switch says A and B. And I think this allows you to choose whether the audio signal should go to the computer or to the headphone connection next to it. We will also remove these wires. So, they are out. Now put the resistor back in place. But first remove some excess solder. And it sits. This can be shelled back on. I saw that the trays had also been sketched out. So I connected them again. Now the drive can be reassembled.
What remains is that text and those holes. Let me see if I can wipe out that text. So, the text is gone. For now I cover the holes with a piece of tape. And now it's ready. The recorder is back in its original state. It's a nice addition to the collection, but that doesn't mean I will be using it again. Such a tape system remains very slow of course, a floppy is much faster. And nowadays you have even faster solutions like an uh, SD card drive or an SEO2 PC. But this brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. And if you also click the like and subscribe buttons, you make me even more happy. Until the next video, bye!